Hello and good morning. Sunday morning. Now we've had to delay the filming. Obviously, the wind's been far too strong, and there is still a little bit of wind on today. So any noise on the camera from the wind, I do apologise. But we needed to wait because yesterday we could hardly stand up in it about filming it. Now we're going to start at the shed. I have a few. I have a friend who wants to put some wildflowers into his lawn, so I'm going to raise them in the root trainers, and then he can plant them with a bulb planter straight into the lawn to say digging the lawn up to put the seed in. So I'll just show you. I've only got three three lots to do. They'll soon germinate outside as long as we keep the birds off them because there's wild seeds so they'll eat them. <laughs> These two trays here are both finished and I've put some compost on top. They just want watering in now. Just... This is the tray I've started. I've got three books still to plant so I'll plant those. This is the seed. There you go. All sorts in it. It's what uh, what was actually given to me to set, so I don't know what is in it, but it looks interesting. And I just put this in this piece of paper and then just tap, and then just let a few seed go in each cell. I would think the the strongest seed will be the first ones up and then the other ones hopefully will follow but the root trainers have got plenty of compost in so there should be enough room in them for all these different seeds and that's it I just put a handful or two of compost on top and then just riddle it in just riddle it down until you won't get it all through but this will go straight back in the bag and then I'll get another handful that should do it, I think. Nearly, anyway. Yeah, that should be fine. Just get the label and just level it off so they've all got a bit of compost on top. There's plenty on there, look. Now I'm not going to bottom soak these, I'm going to water straight over the top with a fine rose. But before I do that, I'm just going to touch the tops to make sure the seeds got contact with the compost and then put the label in and then water them. Now water straight on. The bench is well painted so it's all right to water on it but soon dry anyway in this wind the thing to do is to water them and then about 20 minutes water them again so it goes right down into the the root train when i finish them i'll be keeping them outside on a bench it's just over there instead of here and then i'm going to cover with this fleece just a single single one like that just except for that bit we'll not use that bit because it's got a hole in that we'll move that on a bit there you are it's only a piece of old fleece so it'll do nicely let the light in and let the water in when it rains and that'll be fine then if it hasn't rained I should just give them a a light watering daily until and they'll be up in no time now we'll pop down the garden we've got one or two things to plant and that should be close to the end of our planting then now while we're passing we'll just show you the nelimosa that's on this old arch it's doing very well this year and it seems to thrive on neglect because we never seem to do anything to it but it just flowers so well what i've been doing in between the heavy gusts of wind which is 
it's still blowing itself out now. Uh, is planting some of the pumpkins up. I've done two of the large pumpkins, one at each end. I'm putting the small sugar ones, three up each side, and then growing the whole lot in a circle. I normally put the bottles to each pumpkin. Now, uh, I'm a bit short of bottles at the moment, but I've got some come in, they said they'll pop them in a bag and leave them at the front door, but they're not there yet. We don't drink enough water produ to produce the amount of bottles I need. We're doing our best, but we'll need quite a few bottles. But as they arrive, I'll put them on the tomatoes and the pumpkins, obviously. We've just got one more to put in, and we'll put it just here. I'm using the bulb planter, just get rid of those stones. Just the smallest hole, and take that out. With the soil being so dry, it tends to fall in. So I'll just take a bit of that out. There you go. And we'll pop that in. What I want to tell you though, if you're using a bulb planter and you're pushing it into relatively dry ground, you will be making a shiny rim just here that the plants will have a job to penetrate. So when we finish, we planted it, we'll go round with the trowel and just loosen it. Oh, it jumped in that one. And then just go round. You can see it's quite hard. Just go round and loosen that soil a little. Because then when you water it, it will soften all that soil so the roots can get out and um, we'll put the label on say what they are we'll probably never never see the label again because these will grow very quite fast as you can see they're all planted in sort of a circle now as they're growing I should keep training them to go in this circle using those clips we made. You can remember with the yellow hose pipe on top. That'll keep them all in line. If you don't do that, they'll take this whole area over. And you and also by keeping the bottles and then when I can't see that bottle I drop another one into it so you can be knowing where the roots are to put the water and feed it. They're, they're quite easy to look after if you keep going round every couple of days and just sorting everybody out. The other thing is, as they move around, is just to put a bit of soil on some of the leaf joints and you'll find they'll give you more roots and they'll root themselves down into the soil as well, which makes looking after them a lot easier. Now we're going to plant some sweet corn. This is where we're going to put the sweet corn. Now, yesterday it took quite a beating. It only blew one over and I've propped that up with a couple of small canes down there. But I'm quite pleased that the whole lot didn't blow over. I've just got two more to put in of these big ones. They are called glass gem. These are ones that, some of the ones that Gemma sent to us, so they're new to me. I'm putting them in at 12 inches apart, which is about the normal spacing for sweet corn. Remember, if you want mini sweet corn though, you can plant them at 6 inches. They are wind pollinated, so they need to be in a square if possible. This trowel's about 12 inches long, so we'll work on the trowel. Put it up against there, not like that. And that's where we'll put the hole. Oh God. Now I've dug those two holes ready 
And what I'm doing, I'm going to put some fertilizer in. This is just hoof and on mixed with some calcified seaweed. The reason I'm planting everything with a little bit of fertilizer is obviously the amount of floods we've had and the test for the fertilizer was a bit inconclusive because the land was so wet so I decided just put a bit of hoof and horn and calcified seaweed mixed together in all the planting holes uh, with the fertilizer it's just a case of belt and braces if I don't do it I wish I had done it and if I've done it it's only cost a few pence anyway so it's having fertilizer there's a sweet corn they're quite strong these plants because we had that cold spell I kept them in and then I've had to harden them up obviously afterwards so they're a little bit long in the pot but that doesn't matter we we'll just pop them in nice and tight because they will try and rock about in the wind again break the edges up so the water will compact them down that's it give them a good press hold them firm and that'll do fine so just pop the other one in quickly if we can get it out there we go these will be the roots that come off the plant that really do anchor it down these thick ones so the sooner you get them in the better there you go make sure it's touching the bottom for those roots and as i said break the sides I won't be watering these till we've finished filming because we've got quite a bit to put in and then I'll carry the cans down and do them all. That's the sweet corn in and hopefully a good long season we'll have some good sweet corn on those. Now we're going to plant three tomatoes that I've got left for planting with you but I just wanted to show you what I do. Now this is Roma, as you can see it's been well bashed with the wind over the last two days but that'll soon get over that. But what I wanted to show you now, Roma is one that we don't remove the side shoots, we grow them as a bush. So, But I always make sure it's got a nice clean stem for when I plant them as you can see on the line and that keeps the bottom clean and easier to water and feed but all I do is just click these off the, if you just normally if you just lift the leaves up they'll snap off with it being a bit windswept they're taking a bit doing but I leave a nice stem on it I know Roma was grown in these terracotta coloured pots so I could keep them separate. But you see, it's fine. It's fine, it's ready to go in. So we'll do the same. We've made the hole. We put a little bit of this fertiliser in. And in it goes. Make sure it hits the bottom and then break the sides away so those roots can get into the soil. And that bit of fertiliser has gone in there nicely now. There you go. We'll just stand a big cane next to it. Now um, I've left my taping machine in the shed so I'll have to come back and do these and also an eye protector for the top but that's in the shed as well now these two rows are Roma which are the plum shaped tomatoes what Diane uses for culinary use and freezing 
for the winter use. Should be enough there with two rows. This row next to them is the same ones as we're putting in now and they're cocktail crush. They, they're cocktail crush which are hopefully blight resistant. You can see the wind started to take the toll on one or two of the leaves but I'm sure they'll be fine. The tomatoes on this side are a few cocktail crush, a few crimson crush, a few gardener's delight and at the front there was three of the sun gold, the yellow ones that I had left over from the greenhouse so they went out as well. These are two crimson crushed that I've got left to pop in with you. They just want side shooting a little bit but I'll show you that when I get ready, get the hole ready. These are all at two foot centres And I should do the same, I should put a handful of the feed in. Just a small handful, not a lot, but just enough to give it something to, to bite onto. As you can see, they want side shooting and they're a bit down a bit because of the wind, but that's fine. We'll just take those off. We'll take this leaf off as well that's low down to only drag on the floor. I'll have to put those down there and pick them up when I want to take those off. Big one there. They're actually in flower so we have nice low trusses on them and then just before I plant it I take the the tape fastener off take the tape fastener off and put it in the pocket as I say, we've got the machine in the shed, I haven't brought it down, but I'm sure they'll be fine till then. Well rooted, it's ready. So, in the hole right to the bottom, and then just go round, like we do for everything. Loosen that soil, so those roots can get out. Tidy it up, a little bit of a press. I'll put a short cane. Now I'm putting short canes in because I've actually ordered some long canes but they haven't arrived yet. As soon as they arrive we'll change them all to long canes, six footers. And just push that in. And then I'll fetch the taper in a bit and pop the tape on it. The easiest way to do two foot is to do that and there's the hole. And if you do the same that way, we know that's got a good two foot centre. The same again, look. To the feeding, not a lot. There's the name tank, Crimson Crush. Just take these off, look, like that. If you just bend that up, it comes off quite simple. There's the side shoot. If you just nip them off, and this leaf ought to come off, it could be dragging on the floor a lot. So just lift them up and come away. Try best you can not to tear them. If you tear them, you'll strip the bark or the skin of the plant off and then disease can get in. Got one more here, look, we'll just take that off. You'll find though, if you can do that, not long after they've been watered, they break off quite easy. And as you can see on this one, there's a tomato on it already. Nice root, and in it goes. Nice and firm, to the bottom more than anything. Now, just before, if your trusses are forming, uh, up here instead say two foot off the ground instead of what 18 inches you can actually bury the tomato a good six inches into the ground they don't mind they will root from the stem 
So you and you'll get an extra route then as well. But these are fine as they are. What I do tend to do though, I tend to mound the soil up a bit around the tomatoes because eventually it will settle and then they're not in a dip. So mound them up, water them well, put some marigolds in and they'll be fine. Just put the stick in, I'm putting the stick in on this side so hopefully they won't blow over until I fetch the machine. Now that's all the tomatoes planting. Uh, they are taking quite a toll from the wind but I will keep watering them best I can. As you can see my little windmills flying round. I did have two but I can't find the other one. I'll have to go looking round till I can find it. This row here I've actually had the last of the six foot canes went in here. The others haven't arrived yet. As soon as the others arrive we'll change them all to the six foot. Obviously you don't need a cap on the six foot. I put bottles in as well that I've got at this end and then I'll slowly put them in the mall as they come available. But it does help with the watering and feeding. Here we are down the bottom just below the plum tree. We do have a few plums on it this year. A little bit of leaf kale but I'm not too concerned about it. It'll soon grow through that. Now we're going to put in this area here which is usually left empty but this year I'm going to put Turk's turban in there and let them run through it. I've put four in, there's just two more to put in. Same again, dig the hole, bit of fertiliser and then back there. We'll dig both holes, it'd be quicker. With the old stone there, not the new one, okay. I don't know if you hear it, but the wind's getting up again. I do apologise, but there's not a lot we can do. Right, give it a bit of a mix and then just, that's plenty. Well rooted, they'll be fine. In they go. Press that one in. And this one. Yes, rooted nice, so that's fine. Make sure it's at the bottom. And then a bit of a press. Now as we pass, we'll just show you the potatoes coming up nicely. I have ridged them. They will want doing again, I think. Now we've made our way back to the clematis. There are a few bees about, so I don't want to be here very long. Just enough to say, that's it for this week. Hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure planting with you. Many, many thanks for those people who have subscribed. We do appreciate it. And thank you for watching. Hopefully, if I'm not stung, I'll see you next week where we're going to have the grand tour so we'll show you everything that's been planted there's just a little bit of seed to put in but we'll do that and then show you it all in so we'll see you next week take care everyone bye now <laughs>